Hey garden friends, this is going to be the second half of the prior video where I was potting up petunias and I had said I was going to pot up rose cuttings that have rooted. So it got too long, so I cut it in half and this is where I will share the potting up of my roses that I rooted from cuttings in winter. And I'll tell you my secret to how I got them to root, even though it was midwinter. So join me here and we'll talk about other things as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. Okay, so I'll get to the potting up of the rose cuttings, I promise. So someone asked me to talk about own root roses a little bit more. And um, I'm supposing why I love them so much. Well, own root roses are roses that are grown from cuttings or uh, from air layering a rose. And the rose roots and the canes are all the same plant. Grafted roses, and I'll share this one. This one is not grafted. If this had been grafted, you would find a little nodule or a nub where you could tell um, something had happened. And that is where they would have grafted a cutting from a certain rose onto a rootstock of another rose. Supposedly the rootstocks that they use are more vigorous. They can get bigger roses faster. Um, and I have read that um, grafted roses will not live as long. Something always happens to the graft um, as own root roses. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just something I read. So this is a David Austin rose. It's called Constant Spry. And I don't know if it's considered a rambler, just a climber. Um, it's a one-time blooming. Now, why I got that instead of one that continually blooms is usually for me, the one-time bloomers bloom before all my other roses. And they'll bloom, bloom for several weeks. So by the time they're done blooming, the other roses have come into bloom. Plus they're just really pretty and easy to grow. Um, so that is why I also indulge myself in one-time bloomers. Many times they're vintage roses, but this is a David Austin rose, English rose, and it's a climber. Did I notice? I don't know if I said that already, probably did. But anyway, so this is own root. You see the stalk here is just one piece, not anything grafted on. Also, what I love about them is if you get suckers, like under, growth coming from underneath the ground up, you don't have to worry about being the rootstock rose, which is not usually a very pretty rose. Um, it, and you, it wouldn't be the original rose that you purchased. So those roses, I have to cut the suckers off. These roses, the suckers are great because they are the same rose. And for me, because of where I live in the mountains of Northern California, we have quite capricious springs. We will have warm weather like this next week. Um, like today, it's sunny, cloudy, mild. Um, next week, we're supposed to get near 70 beautiful days. We could very well get a hard freeze the very next day, the very next week. Super hard. And you see how this is budding out. Many of my roses are budding like this. Can you see this? Let me do something with my camera really quick. Um, oh, here it is. I think that's the one. So, anyways, that is my rose that is, I don't know if that worked or not, but anyways, this is budding. All my roses out there in my garden are budding. Now, if I got a hard, hard freeze, those buds all would be killed back. And the problem with that is it won't kill the rose usually, unless it's a super hard freeze. Like one year we were having 80 degree temperatures for a week or two. And then overnight it dropped down to 10 degrees. Um, it killed almost all of my grafted roses. Well, it killed all my roses to the ground, but the own root roses came back from the roots and they were the rose I grew. The grafted roses grew again, but it was the graft. It wasn't the rose that I had purchased. So that is why I love own root roses because I will have those freakish weather events that can kill roses very easily. And, um, 
roses are pretty tough, so that tells you how weird our weather could be. But that's living in the mountains. That's just the way it is. And if I want roses, I have to learn how to do it and do it right. So own root roses are my choice of roses. I still indulge in grafted roses from time to time. I bought two last year on the Bargain Rack at Lowe's. Um, it was Sexy Rexy. It was a rose I'd seen and admired many times. And it was one of those cheap, you know, roses that they get in and they have them in a the little container. And I think they were $9. So I thought I'll take a, I'll take a risk. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, but we'll see. We'll see, see, see. Sometimes I do indulge. But that is the difference between grafted roses and own root roses. This one is an own root, as I said before. So I'm getting it ready to plant. I uh, soaked it overnight, actually two nights, because I couldn't get to it yesterday. And now, so it fits into the hole very easily that I have dug. I didn't dig it you know, wider than the roots, etc. I dig what I can dig because I have so many plants in there. And um, a lot of times they'll say, you can do it three feet wide. You know what? You can plant a rose without going to all that trouble. But I do need to trim the roots back a little bit to get it to fit into the hole without breaking anything. So that's what I'm going to do. Also, I soaked it in the water with organic rev. And um, I've talked to you about that before, and I'll link different videos that I've talked about. But it's a growth stimulant, and it's really excellent for when you're planting things like this to um, give the roots some extra help. All right, so I'm examining this. Now this one's coming way out to this side, and so is this one. So I'm just cutting back a little bit. Now this will not hurt them. Um, actually, it stimulates more roots when you trim them back. Kind of like they say, don't prune your roses when you're expecting a freeze because it stimulates growth. All right, those can be gently pruned. This one really is wonky and going straight out, so I know that one's going to cause issues. And this one too. So, there we have these. Now it's, it'll fit in the hole easier. So now we're going to go out and plant it where I have decided. It took me a long time. I walked around and around, and I debated on whether to put it in a pot, a large pot, to protect it from the gophers. Um, I do have gopher cage that I could plant it in, and I'll see how big that is, because the hole is not that big. Let me see, I got a box of them down here. And if you struggle with gophers, you just, you gotta find ways to deal with them. I have other roses in these type of cages. This is a mesh cage. Now the only problem I have, and I don't know if it's an issue, because you can see how big these roots get. Will they go through this? You know, I don't know. I don't know if that stunts them. I have some, like I said, out there already growing in these. But these are nice because um, they compress, meaning I could put it in the hole and it will you know, come up around it like that. But like I said, I don't know how these do. If they push through it, I don't know. Anyways, so uh, like I said, I have some already planted in this. I could, I have some roses out in that bed that are planted directly in the soil without the gopher cage and they've done fine. Um, so to me, it's a gamble. Maybe I should try it. Um, that way I wouldn't have to worry about whether these bigger roots that anchor it get through the mesh. And then maybe I can inspect some of the other roses out there later. Or, you know what, I do dig them up if I notice go for trouble and pot them or, you know, get them uh, back in health if they have damaged them. So I guess I could take a chance. I didn't notice any gopher activity there this so far. So I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to... Uh, put it in my, I have a garden map of that area. So let's go out and plant it in the soil. Okay, so here's my hole. I'm going to get over there. Kind of a black pit for you. And perfect. My rose, oh, got it upside down. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. 
Okay, so yeah, it fits down in there perfectly. The roots will all be beneath the soil. And now I just fill in. And you notice it's not that wide of a hole. And cutting back those roots really made a difference in it being able to fit in the hole well. And I'm just going to hold it while I put this all back in here. Now tonight we're supposed to get rain, like maybe a quarter of an inch. So this will help settle those in there around the roots, the soil. I don't have a hose hooked up out here right now because I had to turn them off because of the freezing weather. But I do have some organic rev that I could go ahead and put here. I don't have any compost ready to put in here. So I could put some like potting soil or something on top or just some mulch. So I got that in there. It's all doing good. I probably should bury it up higher. Oop, got a worm right there. Alrighty. Okay, I have some mulch over here. I'll go ahead and bury it with that. And I will water it in with my Rev water to help it get going. But first, let me get that compost. Oh, never mind. I did find some compost that's finished. Let me go get it. I'll be right back. All right. So, got the compost there. And I will heal this in, which means just press it firmly with your foot, not too heavily. There, now it's all set. All righty. This is where I will add the rev. And then I will let the rainwater do the rest. And now let's go on and pot up those rose cuttings that rooted. The, now I started them, I think, around January 20th. And to get them to root better, I had read about putting them on a heat mat. And that seemed to do the trick. Now, I did lose half of the cuttings, which I figured that was pretty good. I didn't think I'd get really any. I was hoping to get some, but yeah. So if half rooted, I'm pleased. So I have went out and taken more cuttings because mine are showing growth and you could do it when they're, um, you could do them when they're uh, hardwood cuttings, meaning they're completely dormant. Um, they just take longer. And, uh, but mine weren't. Mine were still showing that they were not fully dormant and had little buds popping out. So that's why uh, I felt confident in, in trying it at least. So that's what I did there. So let's go on and get those things potted up. Alrighty, so here we go on the roses. Do I have any more of my little pots? I have three. I have three, so. Now I could repot this. This is, and it's still growing. This is a, oh, darn it, um, hibiscus I grew from seed, a Luna hibiscus. And I can see it's got little green sprouts coming out from it. But I could use the pot. I could repot it, give it fresh soil, and it would be all good to go. And then I'd have it for the roses. Let me see. I have one, two, three, four, five that I know have rooted, and two that have not rooted. So we will. I'm trying to find another spot. I'm running out of space here. All right. Now, I will confess that. I didn't write down, like I said, I was going to, the names of what roses I put where. So I know one row was my Grandpa Newt roses, and I have a feeling it was this one. And it's these all didn't make it, and this is what I wanted to show you. Let me see if I can wash that off without harming it. 
Okay. Let me get it up here. Now this one hasn't fully rooted yet, but can you see, whoops, what am I doing? See that little white nub there? And this callusing down here? That's saying that is rooted, but I just see a tiny root coming out right there. So I think I'm gonna use one of these for it. And I'm gonna set it gently in there. because so I do not wanna rub that off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it up. And one thing about it, when it does continue to root, I will be able to tell because I will see, be able to see through the translucent pot. So I'm gonna very gently press, very, very gently. And then I'm pretty sure this is my Grandpa Newt rose, so I'm gonna put GN on it. If you're new here, this is the rose that we dug up um, from my grandparents' barnyard. That was a favorite of theirs. My grandfather had bought it from my grandmother, who knows when, and he was not a romantic type person. <laughs> but he'd sit out on his back porch and we'd sit out there with him and he'd just exclaim, isn't that the prettiest rose you ever did see? Because it would just bloom and bloom and bloom. And I have to say it blooms all summer for me. Uh, and it really holds the rose as well, the flowers. Okay, now let's see, I haven't dug up. Oh, I shouldn't fill that up yet, should I? Okay, this one over here is a climber, a pink climber. And I guess I could, I don't have to dig it up that way. This is one of those silicone based planters and I could just pop it up. Ooh, that one has a lot of good roots coming out of it. Let's see if I can see roots coming out. Yep, I can. So I could just see that I like the silicone so I could just push up and here comes the whole thing. Oh, well, I guess I didn't see roots. Was, which one am I seeing roots? Oh, well, that one down there. Or at least I hope that the roots didn't tear off, but it does have little nubbins coming. I'm gonna dig up the soil and see if I somehow, I didn't, oh yeah, there it is. There's a root on it. Okay, it wasn't as bad. I need to undo this, set that very carefully on there because those roots are super, super, Delicate. And I'm barely pressing the soil down. I mean barely. So I will water that in with that. Alrighty. Two down and five more to go. Okay. So now I remember what that one was. Now the rest of them I am not sure. Um, it's not sad that I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Okay, so there's a root of this one coming through. Let's see if I can get it up. Oh, wow, that one has some nice roots. Look at this. So can you see those roots? All the way around, beautiful, just beautiful. So I can just plop that right in there. I don't have to even move the soil off. And the only reason these ones, the soil came out, well, one I rinsed, but the other was they didn't have a full amount of ro roots yet. So this one has a blue mark on it and I marked it for a reason. So um, I will have to go look at my video I did and it might tell me which that one is. And here, this one has a blue mark as well, but this one, let me see if it's got roots. Oh yeah, it's got roots coming out the other side too. Okay, so I have those. Now these have really good roots, so I can put them in containers that are opaque. Let's see, these ones will work. They're, they've been cleaned up, surprisingly. And I will push that up, pull it. Look at those roots right there. That is so much fun, at least it is for me. Okay, so I will continue to let these grow inside. Once June rolls around and it's warm, even maybe May, I can put these outside. And um, 
they'll be fine. They could, they could make it out here just fine. I just want to help them to keep growing by having them in the warmth of the outdoors. So let's see. Now this one has good roots. Good roots. Now a couple of them were eaten, and I don't remember which ones. Um, I checked yesterday, I went out and checked the air layering, I, I air layer roses too. And I did a video I think in November of me putting the, the thing on the rose bush um, to air layer it, or the cane, so that I could get a rose faster. And what I mean by faster is, you do a larger cane and it's big and usually you can get a rose faster than cuttings or at least a larger rose faster than with cuttings. You know what? I've got these that I started last year and I never took them out of these pots and they need to be repotted but oh I won't do that. I'll just get some of my other pots over here. Anyways so I was disappointed. I was because it was still had, you know, um, good growth. It was like it was going to take off and just sat there dormant. So hopefully it didn't callous over. Oh, oh no. Okay. Even though this one had some good roots coming. See that? Um, yeah. So I have to be careful. I'll just set it in here. And... I really am kicking myself for not writing down what I did. Which plants, I, which ones were in what row, because I have them numbered. And it just was one of those things. I have been so disorganized this season. And I have no excuse. Okay, so this one has no roots, but it has the callusing. Do I have any more liquid in here to rinse it off? Yeah, see, it has the callusing. It's a white, like, bumpy stuff that starts um, on it, and that has it. So, I could do another little one. Do one of these. And see if it continues to grow more roots. Okay. There we have our roses all pot it up and I'll mix up some more Rev to give them a good boost with some water and we're good to go and I will dump this out probably out in one of my beds, my raised beds um, and or I could pasteurize it to reuse. So I hope you enjoyed this video on all things roses, uh, what I, why I like own root roses and potting up rose cuttings that I took in late January and all of that. So give it a whirl and you never know what will happen. I, I've got what eight new roses out there or in there. I've got them back after I potted them up. I did take them in the house and put them on the under the light rack so it was warmer. I could have left them out here in the greenhouse. Now right now in here it is um, almost 70 degrees because the sun uh, has been out and when it hits on here it really warms up nice but at night it gets as cold as it is outside this is not a heated greenhouse it's not insulated so it's just a glorified cold frame and but it does the job because I can uh, like this time of year put things in here that wouldn't make it necessarily or do well outside so look at these these are what I bought on my trip just recently and I think, I don't know, I'll put the video up soon if I haven't already, but look at these. Aren't these the most beautiful color? I just love these. I had bought these for planting somewhere else, but I'm tempted because in my circle garden, in my secret cottage garden, they would look great there. And they would continue on through the rest of the winter and do just fine. So I'm, almost, I'm tempted to put them there. I don't know, we'll do. We'll, I'll make a, a decision on that because I can go back and get more 
if I need to um, to put elsewhere. So the alyssum over here too is just smelling, scenting up in here along with the stock. Oh, the armeria. This is isn't this gorgeous? Yeah, I got that too. I got that for me. So I'll do a whole thing on what I got and where I'm going to put them when I put them out there. So yeah, I had fun going to that garden center. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. Oh, that's what I need to do, you guys. This look at these. I, I know, I have plenty of dreams, but this color I don't have. And I thought, oh, these are doing so beautiful and I can take cuttings and start more of these and maybe have one big planter full of this color. And I thought with maybe a white alyssum or the, um, what is it, something falls dichondra. I can't remember what it is called, but. Anyways, I've got the seeds for that somewhere and I was gonna start them, but A-okay, that'll all be for another video. So I'll, Put up the video right here where I started, or right there, when, where, somewhere up here. I will put the video of when I took the rose cuttings and how I um, potted them up to grow and grow roots. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.